Carlos Rojas Alvarez has been a community and youth organizer and policy advocate for over eight years. When his immigration status barred him from enrolling in college, Carlos became an education policy associate at Youth on Board and the New England representative to the National Coordinating Committee of the United We Dream Network, the largest undocumented youth-led network in the country. Please join me in welcoming Carlos Rojas Alvarez. Good morning. Good morning and uh, thank you, Alicia. And uh, I'm really excited to be speaking after two uh, members of Congress. Uh, I I'm sure that you've made it very easy for me to follow up. Um, well, I'm, I'm here to tell you a story. Uh, I was born in Colombia uh, in a city called the City of Eternal Spring. Uh, and it was surrounded by green lush mountains everywhere you looked. Uh, it was my birthday yesterday and uh, per tradition, Thank you. Uh, and per tradition, my mother told me the story of how we got to this country. And every birthday I reach, she's astounded at how big and grown I am. Uh, a working mother, she was practically single by the time that I was three. Uh, she got a call from her brother, who was already in the United States. He promised to help her get to America, but on one condition. And that condition was that she leave me behind. America, he said, is not a country for immigrant kids. He gave her five minutes to decide while he spoke to my grandmother. And in those five minutes, my mother looked at me on the floor as I was playing with toy cars, and she imagined a life without me. And worse, she imagined my life without her. I'll find another way, she told him. And he hung up on her. <laughs> that was in February, and in June, we were on a plane headed to the United States. <laughs> Those are the kinds of choices that millions of immigrants have to make to get to this country. My mother is the kind of immigrant that will make this country great again. <laughs> And I'm so glad that she made the right choice for, for me to be in this country because I'm so ecstatic to be with all of you today. So I want to tell you a little bit about the way undocumented immigrant youth, known as Dreamers, won the biggest immigration victory the country had seen in 26 years. We started in small pockets across the country, just like you. One by one, we stepped out of the shadows. We told our stories, first with our voices disguised and our faces blurred, and then in groups, and then by the hundreds. We learned to tell our stories to people who didn't look like us. We learned to tell our stories to people who had been raised to call us illegal aliens. We learned to tell our stories to people who had been raised to believe that we were the enemy. So what story do you have to tell? Everybody has a story to tell. We confronted democratic power and exposed the hypocrisy of an administration who had deported more immigrants than all other presidents combined. We showed the country that while the party promised it wasn't deporting children and students, we were being deported every single day and we stopped deportations right in their tracks. Even, <laughs> even when it meant stepping out in front of ICE buses, like we did in Arizona. <laughs> On June 15th of 2012, a few days after I graduated from high school, President Obama announced Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, from the Rose Garden. It was the largest immigration victory that we had seen in a very long time. And young people made that happen. I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm hopeful that if immigrant undocumented youth could win then, all of us in this room can win again. I'm confident that we can push the limit 
we can stretch imaginations and dream up a world that is possible. And there are three things that we have to do to win again. One, it's time that we get bold. Defending immigrants, valuing black lives, saving the Affordable Care Act, and defending the planet will require bold action from everyone. Here in Massachusetts alone, there's plenty to support. What are you planning to do to connect with immigrant groups in your town or city to support the Safe Communities Act? Or to stop the deportation of a loving mother or a student? Are you ready to call your friends and cousins and parents who might live in red districts and explain to them why I, a young man that you heard speak not a long time ago, needs the Clean Dream Act now? Are you ready to knock on 20,000 doors as indivisible for the millionaire's tax? And what, are you, and what are you prepared to do when another young black man is gunned down by the police? The second thing we have to do, it's this time to heal as a movement. Now more than ever, we're being called to build movements that are sustainable and that are centered on liberation for all of us. I want to get real here. How many of you have unfriended a family member or a friend on social media since the election? How many of you are still not talking to someone because of a political difference? Movements that discard people, movements that fail to recognize the goodness in every person, are movements that are destined to fail. We need restoration and repair instead of punishment. We need to call people in, not out. And we need radical love. And what that means is, <laughs> what that means is we need to answer the call of those who came before us, like Dr. King, like Rosa Parks, like Lillian, Masadiba, Matabane, and Goyi to take responsibility as people to liberate, our, to liberate ourselves and everyone else around us. I know that what I'm asking you is unfair. Believe me, I feel the exact same way. It's not exactly a piece of cake to listen to a struggling father of four call me illegal. It's not exactly easy to watch young children tease other children because of the color of their skin or because of their accents. But I believe we have a responsibility to bring as many people over to our side, and I think that begins with principled love. <laughs> we missed something big this past election that I can't afford to miss again, that my mother can't afford to miss again, and that you all can't afford to miss again. My colleague and I invite you to join our workshop at 1245 open doors, healing, dialogue, and listening across political difference. If you want to learn how to start, begin to be able to do this. I'm so excited to be with you today, and I'm sure that with great and beautiful people like you in this room, we can begin to win again and again. Thank you.